So this week, Daredevil launched this weekend. Is everyone watching Daredevil season two? I haven't got around to it yet. No? I don't have Wi-Fi in my new flat yet, which okay. is just changing my whole life. For better or for worse, Why are you I so tired? Worse. Why are you so tired then? What? You, why were you so tired if you I haven't been watching why. Daredevil? I'm like chugging coffee, like trying to keep up. Yeah. I'm just drained. I'm just a drained human being. Well, so I've been watching it. You look like we're not we're gonna talk about this in sort of non spoilery yeah. terms. Yeah. If only because we've both seen the very start yeah. and nothing else. <laughs> That's right. Um but we're gonna talk about <clears throat> episode one and some of episode two. But one of the things for me, the straight away I completely forgot how bad a character Foggy Nelson is. I don't think I could forget if I wanted to. I've Ugh. tried to forget. He's, He's just, just a awful. Thing. The thing about him is I'd... I'd feel okay about, you know, sometimes you need some comic relief, but he, yeah. he serves no purpose. No. Like, he's never oh. there for a narrative reason. No. I just don't get it. I don't understand what the writing process is there. Yeah. Like, it's really strange. It's just, I think, you know, he's one of those actors where every time, just before he says a line, you can look him in the eyes <laughs> and you can see him remembering the line in his head. <laughs> like, he's such a bad actor. I haven't been, I haven't really had a problem with his acting yet. I just, yeah. I'm hopefully putting it down to the character itself. Like, no, I just don't find anything he says funny. I just don't, like, anytime he's... Like, God, in the first season when mm. he was getting all, like, moody with, oh, Christ, with Morocco, it's yeah. like, oh, yeah. you don't need to be here. Like, yeah. none of this needs to happen. It was just such a horrible, like, stupid I layer on top I of it. I think, like, I just, I, like, Foggy Nelson in the comics, oh. it, like, he's not super annoying, but he's not, the you know, he's not the guy that you, you're, you're not picking up an issue of Data they're going, can't wait to hear what Foggy's saying. <laughs> but yeah. he's just, he's not that bad. But the thing that really annoys me is the way that they, the way that they're using him. And I was, I was talking to somebody the other day about uh, Vinyl as well, which is a TV show that like, I've been watching. I'm on episode five of, and I absolutely love it. It's the best thing I've watched this year, I think. And th again, there's another character in that where basically the main character is doing something cool. The opposition for that is his wife. And his wife is just like, it's just really bringing him down all the time. She's just like, and I told, turned to my girlfriend, I was like, I just once I'd like to see a guy who's a badass and not the not have a wife that's just like, oh, you should be doing this, you should be doing that, going, okay, no, I married a badass. I'm in your badass life doing badass things with you. Mm. And I kind of want, like, um... want Foggy to be like that. Like, And in the first episode, we don't have that. We have him going, oh, Matt, you shouldn't be going around being... It's like, know, like, be cool. You know Daredevil. Be like, oh, you're too. You're, you're Foggy Daredevil, to be man. cool. <laughs> and that is <laughs> the <laughs> amount of time between those two series as well. Like, yeah. There's some time has elapsed oh. and he's still complaining about it. The he's perfect, still going perfect on. Yeah. example of what you want is uh, House of Cards. Okay. Like, they are, like, the best power couple yeah, of all time. That's like, really badass good, yeah. wife, like, badass husband yeah. doing, like, badass stuff together. Yeah. But, yeah, Foggy is just not that person. I can see that Foggy is, obviously, he's, you know, he's worried for his friends. He's, he doesn't want his friend to die. He doesn't want his business partner to die either because quite clearly the brains in Murdoch yeah. and Nelson or Nelson and Murdoch is <laughs> there's a brilliant bit in Murdoch. the first episode where someone refers to him like derogatorily you know, derogatorily yeah. as Harvard and I'm yeah. like and he's like oh actually no Columbia and I was like oh my god he's meant to be <laughs> Ivy League educated <laughs> yeah. he's a moron like, he's awful and it's just it's really really I think really his bad. dad was the dean I think that was the <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. his dad was like the sports coach yeah. or something yeah. <laughs> well th that is kind of what you get in the comics where you know it's kind of made out that Foggy's is not this very cool person and he is sort of riding the coattails but I don't know I just want him to be cool and I want him to be a character that I just don't groan every time he's on screen I want to feel like it's going somewhere when he's yeah. on screen like even he's he's got one solo scene in the first episode that goes yeah. firstly goes on for way too long yeah it's just endless of mm. him just whining and then and then, oh, is that with the bikers? With the bikers. Oh, Christ, yeah. It just goes on forever, and it's yeah. just him being, like, tortured by bikers. <laughs> That's a like, really for weird... for being a nerd. That's a really <laughs> weird scene, that is, as well, because he mentions a guy who's basically... He basically says, I'm here to see so-and-so guy, and especially guys, some guy who's dead. Um, so they go to kill him, and then he's outside, just about to be killed, I guess, and he's just naming people who he thinks might be bikers yeah, that yeah. he's represented. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's and really the, weird. And the guy goes, oh, wait, you, uh, you represent a big P. Off you go, then. Yeah. What? It's really strange. And, like, 
and it doesn't do anything because the whole point of him like they get the, they get this one line in from him where he's like oh, I'm going to go and follow up a lead I think I have uh, because uh, I can find a couple of puzzle pieces that you might not be able to you're like what did he find out what did he find <laughs> out a man a man he once knew has died Dude, that's the problem like what <laughs> it's like it's, we've gotten this far and now we're on a season two and we already like know Foggy as like a character and who he interacts with like what can he bring to the table well, at this point well, the thing that I think he could be doing is what if he is using this sort of you know facade that he's got which is just oh, I'm an idiot and you know I act like an idiot but what if he's using that as a little trick like Columbo and actually the stuff Columbo. like he can't like he's acting silly but he's actually really smart and he's like uh, it's like I work for a big piece like oh okay and he walks away and he goes actually uh, just one more, <laughs> what, one more he's question here and, where, where does uh, Big P usually hang out again just yeah. stop over. are you saying he's Columboing Matt Murdock <laughs> no, pretending no, no. to be an idiot no. to Matt Murdock you should be Columboing other people so while Matt Murdock is out like fighting and stuff like that that is not an adjective by the way Columboing Columboing <laughs> Well, he's doing that, that right? <laughs> like, like that's what Foggy should be doing. But oh God, he's so bad. Do you know what they could have done with him? And this sounds spiteful. Okay, they could have killed him in the first episode. Yeah, and created a narrative reason for Murdoch to be angry with, say, the Punisher. Yeah, like, he could just be dead, and then like, we it would be great. I think that's like not that I want Foggy. I do want Foggy to die. But <laughs> the thing that I'm like, I really want to like it. Like Daredevil is my favorite comic character. Like hundred percent. Really. So many amazing storylines that you could be doing with it but unfortunately it looks like and I really hope I'm wrong that they're doing a really similar thing to they did in the first series where you see this you know two people who are approaching the same result from yep. very different ways yeah and that the conflict is there between them. You know, Daredevil doesn't want to use the kind of force that Punisher wants to use, but he doesn't see another way of doing it. And the same with, like, Wilson Fisk. Like, they both want to make Hell's Kitchen great again, but they're approaching it in, like, very, very different ways. And I think... I really hope it goes away from that duality thing and focuses on something else. Well, like, yeah, I wasn't a massive fan of Jessica Jones for many reasons, yeah. but I th did think that the motivations behind that show, firstly, were actually kind of important for a Marvel yeah. show, but secondly, they were different. Like, it was okay. watching a damaged person chasing the person who damaged them. That's a completely different dynamic and yeah. it changes the entire arc of that series. And even um, like Jessica Jones, it uh, avoided a lot of the like the kind of tropes that Daredevil falls into where you have like your main character and then it's like the two sidekicks or like the group that they all hang out with. Like Jessica Jones, like there were so many characters in that that were like, maybe didn't have their own powers, but really influential, strong, interesting people mm. in their own yeah. sense. It wasn't like Foggy, who's just like someone just like crack wise and like create needless tension. <sighs> like they were all quite interesting characters. I think yeah. the most telling thing in the first episode is that the, the kind of biggest emotional scene for Matt Murdock happens entirely because Foggy leaves and goes to the toilet. <laughs> like there's a scene where he just walks off and then him and Karen have like a really intimate moment. And you're like, oh, it's because Foggy fucked up. <laughs> yeah. <Great. laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, I mean, Foggy is, I'm still going to stick with Daredevil, but my God, is Foggy not very good yeah. in that show? Well, it is worth pointing out that, the for me, episode one was brilliant. Like, mm. Foggy's, Foggy sucks, but I think the way they've introduced the Punisher totally yeah. makes me feel good about where they're going with that Definitely, character. Yeah. Like, it's grim. It's really grim. Yeah. And that's what you want out of the Punisher because if they're going to do the duality thing at least make it obvious yeah now that's fair enough okay on to the good and the bad for this week then and this week is themed by Planet Coaster so we have the good which is Rory. I was wondering what this was because I had no idea <laughs> what's the good section we as in we we're having a good like time a, like on a roller coaster, yeah. yeah someone should and talk to me about this. What, what, what's the what's the bad what's the bad section? Barf. Barf. That's if only ever going to sound good in your accent. Which, is, why? Yeah. What would you? How do you guys? Barf. 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 Yeah. Barf. Just it sounds like yeah. you're saying B A T H. Ex exactly. Well, I'm not. I'm talking about Planet Coaster. Sorry. So hush up. Um, so I went to see Planet Coaster last week. Do you know what Planet Coaster is? It's yeah. the new, is it Frontier making it? Yeah, Frontier Developments, I think, whatever they're called. They're, so the people who make that space game. Um, <laughs> but they've come back down to Earth. And they so they made Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, mm -hmm. which I kind of liked. It was a really, really cartoony version of Roller Coaster Tycoon, which a lot of people sort of didn't like that thing of it because it, it kind of dumbed it down a little bit. Yeah. Even though it was immensely fun. Um, but so this is kind of them going back to it. They're not using the Roller Coaster Tycoon name. Mm. Uh, they're using a name Planet Coaster. 
And it's got this same kind of look as Roller Coaster Tycoon. It's just like really cartoony and fun, but it's so deep and nerdy and there's so much to do in it. Like if you're a really big sort of sim fan, you'll absolutely love See, it. See, these type of games, like, like I have enough things to try and remember and keep track of in my own life. <laughs> I feel like these games, I did Close, love Sims and I did love wash. them as a, as a kid, but like, Adding all these like layers, it's just it's so much to keep track of. I was the one like my brother and my sister used to love this. They used to love Sim City yeah. and a Zoo Tycoon. Mm. And then I was the one that when it was my turn, I would like open up all the gates and let the lions out, and I'd remove <laughs> parts of the roller coasters. Make us have going. a pint of water, tip her on a keyboard. I was just yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Start <laughs> fires in the corner of the room. Like I, I just wanted like something that was a bit more interesting. Like these definitely aren't my kind of games. Uh, so I don't know like if making it more complex would be a good thing. Well, the other interesting thing is the last thing Frontier did before Elite Dangerous was made yeah. Scream Ride, which yeah. wasn't amazing, but it was a take on the roller coaster thing as sort of a science project, like a yeah. physics thing. Like, has it got any of that in it? Are you, are you I haven't still seen testing that things? much stuff because it's very, very early. And actually, the, the build that I saw... At the time, it, like it, it was going to be the like alpha, or whatever they've like mm -hmm. the public alpha or whatever that they've put up this week. Which so you can actually play it. I think if you sign up, oh, really? you can have a go. I think yeah. Um, but they weren't actually going to include the coasters in it. You weren't going to be able to make, actually build any coast in it, but I think oh, for, oh, after some, what I do know. What do you do then? But is this I, just like well, this is this is the thing because you watching the stock market. You're like which, happiness is down. Happiness is down. That's this the thing. I don't know what you I'm control. Do. You control a lot of the park's mechanics. So this is why, like, it's, it really harks back to like theme park. So you you <laughs> you're gonna be like sleepless in bed at night with your wife and girlfriend, be like, why is no one buying the hot dogs? Yeah, hot that's dog what it is. Sales you, are you, down. Could, year I make, on year. could I make my pathfinding system yeah. any better? Yeah, you control attendance has dropped since like 2016. The drink and the happiness of the guests by all these different. Things like paths in between all the different rides and mm -hmm. things like that, but they were going to have it that you could only use like pre-made um, rides. But I think you can actually make coasters in it now, which is really good. Yeah, it was probably a good sales tactic. Yes, yeah. I think so, definitely, because that's what people want to do. Like, I, sp I started speaking to one producer who mm. was more like a producery type person, so he wasn't art or anything. Are you right? <laughs> yeah, this is really just. <laughs> you think acting. I was just going to get on the leaves? <laughs> yeah. like doing like chair yoga. <laughs> Cool. Um, but so just a guy who was sitting next to me and he wasn't a much of an art guy but there was an art guy sort of right next door to him and he sort of kind of took over and was like he's a massive roller coaster nerd mm. and I mentioned Six Flags because I absolutely love Six Flags it's an amazing yeah. um, theme park in America and he was like oh except for the signs you can pretty much make every ride um, at Magic Mountain, which is the good Six Flags in LA. You can pretty much make all those except for the signs. Um, wow. Because he said like, you can control that much about it that from just every single thing, from like the entrance to the exit, to every single sort of like bank that the roller coaster does, you can control completely and make all these amazing coasters. Are you making literal planets? for theme parks, like what happens in Space Jam. Yeah, maybe. That's what I want. I want like a little planet. <laughs> now you're speaking my language, eh? Space Jam. Space Jam. Yeah. I want those little little dudes from yeah. Space Jam, the Charles the Barkley. The monsters. Yeah, the monsters. Oh, yeah. The Charles Barkley monster, I want him. <laughs> this, is the, this is the kind of game that I could like, actually get lost in for a good, like this is one of the games that you just sink loads of hours into without even realizing you're doing it. Yeah. What is it that would do that for you? Are you obsessed with the micromanagement then? Yes. Really? That's the kind of stuff that I like. This is your monster hunter. Yeah. Well, I just really, I just really like making people happy. No, I really like um, <laughs> controlling people's happiness. Yeah. But I just really like sort of, you know, making decisions, making big decisions in a thing like a park that actually really impact on your entire game. Have you heard like. about the government? <laughs> you should go into the government. <laughs> but the cool thing about it as well, I don't think this is in the bit you can play now, the free bit, but you can do like loads of like weird terrain stuff. I will never do this in the game because I was sitting next to a producer of the game. He tried to do it and he was shocking at it. <laughs> um, he was like, oh yeah, you can like manipulate the terrain. So he showed me this one tree that someone had made and this other sort of like giant sea monster that somebody else had made. Then he just literally just raised some of the ground up a little bit and was just like, yeah, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Like, uh, if I say I want to raise this ground up, <laughs> watch me do that. Oh, God, it's amazing. You guys want trees, pine, maple? Oh, you got them. Really? Oh. Um, if you like management control games, have you ever heard of um, the Kingdom for Keflings games? What? And the World for Keflings games? Oh, yeah. I've, I don't know what this I've is. never played They're them. They're available. The ones, they've got the little Microsoft avatars in them, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. So I think it was like part of Microsoft's like bringing uh, their avatars into the games, but you actually, I think it's like exclusively for Microsoft, but it's totally like um, 
uh, management game where okay. you like build these little cities and you're like this giant and it's like a world filled with these little guys and you have to like go and get resources and things. I think it was like free to download for a really long time, but like really popular games and beautiful soundtrack. And then it's like right up your alley. Does, can I make the giant look like me? Uh, yeah. That's a deal breaker. You can. I yeah. can. And if you can kick the little people if they annoy you. There was a really weird thing where the, but they're great. the Keflings games, or A World for Keflings, I think, came out on Wii U really late. Right. Mm -hmm. But it came out on the Wii U using still like Xbox, oh, Xbox avatars. avatars. Right. When they've got Mies. It was really strange. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I assumed yeah. it was like a Microsoft exclusive because yeah. it was using yeah, yeah. like literally, you just import your avatar into the Apparently game. Not. That's crazy. Yeah. That's really, really strange. But I'm up for it. I really like the game. I want to play more of it. I want to make something like Space Mountain or something like that. I think Sounds it's going to be really good. good. Joe, what's your bit of Wii news? Oh, we news. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm. I'm interested in Zack Snyder, oh, yeah. the Batman vs Superman director, saying yeah. that he now wants to make 300 sequels, as in sequels to the film 300. We had this discussion before where you thought, yeah. I meant literally 300 I thought films. I meant 300 sequels. <laughs> like, it was like. That's what? mental. That's, it would take a lifetime, Zach. I feel like someone <laughs> needs to explain this to him. Um, he wants to make 300 sequels set throughout world history, okay. but through the 300 lens. Right. So I, it just it really captured my imagination. It just sounds mental. <laughs> like he. So two weeks ago, he said he it. wanted to make a George Washington 300. Yeah film so I guess like a shirtless George Washington like <laughs> booting people down I the Delaware a, I made a joke about that in the news video yeah. kicking people down wells going this is America <laughs> and like bolt, like kicking them in the chest but then yeah. he's also said like one at the Alamo uh, one like an ancient Chinese battle a Roman lost legion so he yeah. just really likes small groups of people fighting overwhelming odds yeah. that's basically his thing oh, anything that keeps Zack Snyder away from making from making more DC Superman movies and give those films to somebody else to make all I should say I haven't seen Batman vs Superman yet well, so I mean like have you got any ideas for 300 sequels you could make so oh, I, no. wrote, I wrote down some okay. definitely so I've got the Battle of Agincourt right. that'll be quite good lots of muscly men with longbows but longbows like like up ten meters tall, longbows made out of naked women. Yeah, <laughs> uh, a sexier Zulu, okay. like but still with Michael Caine, right? But nude and old. <laughs> uh, the Lib Dem coalition victory in two thousand and ten that general would be good election. One. That'd be good. Yeah. Uh, my favourite um, Wikipedia entry is called List of Wolf Attacks on Humans. Right. And because there's one entry in it that's about a man called Ben Cockrum, okay. who uh, by himself, the, all they found was his like tattered remains and a gun <laughs> and he killed 11 wolves by himself Whoa. while starving to death so the in the American... So the him versus a legion Well, I wolves. thought that's kind of like the grey... But that terrible Liam Neeson film. Oh, the but terrible, but yeah. what if it's just him and he's like nine foot tall and all the wolves are like foreign Space wolves. Because, <laughs> yeah, it's like Zack Snyder really has a problem with foreign people. Yeah. So just foreign wolves. <laughs> kill that, that, French that actually, wolves. Like not even just a Zack Snyder film. That actually sounds like a really good film. Yeah, it would be an amazing film. <laughs> it's the... Oh, man. So... Just as a side note, this list of wolf attacks on humans got edited once and they took out that entry. Ooh. I went and looked for the original newspaper article <laughs> from the early 1900s to cite it and put it back in. And Why it's would still someone there. take that out? I don't know. It's the best thing on there. <laughs> Probably the wolves. Yeah, the wolves. <laughs> this, this, this makes us look terrible, guys. We need to get rid of this. What's the guy's name? Ben Cockrum. Are there Ben Cockrum deniers? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Yeah, I can't prove that that <laughs> rifle stock <laughs> killed not Bullshit. 11 wolves. Maybe 10. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, a ragtag group of mums on Black Friday. That's good. Just like battering Black store Friday assistants. Would be, yeah, that would be an awesome one. What, but for yeah. 300? Yeah. That'd be good. All like sepia-toned Black Friday. Just um, like hitting people with TVs. South Park did a good couple of episodes on Black Friday. Friday, but it was like making fun of Game of it's Thrones. Game of Thrones, yeah. 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 And that was that. really funny. They like literally had like the watchers of the wall being like the guarding of the Walmarts. It was yeah. really funny. Nah, that's good. Rory, what's your bit of Wii News? My bit of Wii News is that we finally got our possibly our first look 
at the Pokemon Go app. So this is something that you flagged up today and mm. I watched just incredibly excited, like tears in my eyes, <laughs> Pikachu ears on my head. Um, it's the first footage from South by Southwest, yeah. Yeah. wasn't it? Where they're doing a presentation showing some of the first footage that we think is from the game. Yeah. Uh, and I guess like the best part about it is that it just kind of looks like exactly what we all thought it was gonna be like. Mm. Augmented reality where it seems to be the camera pointing at the grass where it's obviously done through motion tracking where mm. I think it's like a Bulbasaur or an Ivasaur. It's an Ivasaur. Yeah. Ivasaurs on the grass and you have to use um, different Pokeballs to capture them and oh, it's all like tracked. So good. And then also like right at the start, I mean that they were kind of showcasing mainly the, the battle part, but if you pause it like at the start of the video, you actually see uh, your- When you pause it right at uh, <laughs> one minute and seven seconds. No, I'm leaving. <laughs> uh, you actually see that the, that the this person, this account has, a, you know, a custom name and a custom Ooh. level and it looks like there's certain levels of, of customization within your own character okay. it's, it's which all, is amazing it's based on the framework of that ingress game that yeah. they made yeah, because beforehand it's, it's a company that, that did that which i don't know if you guys played but it was no, I never no, played it was the coolest idea for an app but ever i know people like literally went to volcanoes and antarctica and stuff for this that still game. going on i think it's closed now uh, okay. but apparently yeah apparently the reason it's pokemon goes a thing is because the the president of the pokemon company was obsessed with ingress oh, wow. like him and his wife had higher ingress levels than the CEO of the developer. It was That's a amazing. really, really cool game. Like, yeah. just such an interesting, interesting mechanic for a game. And like, I, I got really into it and I got my friends into it. Yeah. And of course, I think I when I got into it, I was in Northern Ireland. And of course, there's not that many like great landmarks on the north coast of Northern Ireland. So you actually had to like go into towns and capture mm. posts and things. Oh, I yes. assume in London, like people are probably like capturing well, actually, it's probably not there anymore. But like, if that's the equivalent, there's going to be some cool Pokemon in London. Yeah, What's definitely. Right? It's I... going to be really weird. Like, certain places are just going to get a tourism boost based yeah. on Pokemon being like. Yeah. If you're, you know, on the Hawaiian island where there's just the one Charizard in the world, because that's the yeah. only fireplace in the world. <laughs> like, yeah, that'd be incredible. Like, all these people just turning up with their mobiles, being like. Charizard! <laughs> how are they going to... Do, we don't know anything about it, but how are they going to decide where these Pokemon are? I'm not entirely sure. So it's, yeah. it, they're definitely region-specific. Right. And also, it appears to be that they are sort of surface-specific. Like, in this, an Ivysaur was appearing because it was on grass. Like, right. it could see grass. Yeah, it was all relative to the environment. But then, is Ivysaur... Uh, is there going to be an Ivysaur... Like, if I'm in Wales, mm -hmm. you're in London, you're in... Island. Uh, presumably yeah. there will be multiple okay, spots. Right, like, yeah, yeah. I guess kind of the same way as the Pokemon map is. Like you can catch yeah. like Rattatas yeah. in one place or another place. Actually, maybe but you can't catch Rattatas in one But there's got to be, I really hope that there's very specific ones well, there's one, that you I can only there capture there in yeah, like, one yeah, place. I'm sure, I'm yeah. sure that is is the case. Well, they said in the presentation that, that they did make it clear that you will have to travel to specific locations. Excellent. That's, to what, get that's what I want. And also, like, you may find that it is a bit more limited, like maybe we have a type of Pokemon over here that you can't get in the US. Yeah. But it's important to note that they did say when the app was announced that uh, trading will be allowed, which okay. isn't as exciting, but oh, it means really? that you can, yeah, be able to trade online with people. So maybe if there's like Pokemon that we can't get over here, you can like go online through the database and swap it out. Oh, it's going to be like a so. black market but Pokemon I don't want, I don't want to trade. I don't want, I, you want to be there? You want to go to the yeah, locations. definitely. You don't man. have to trade. That's all right. Yeah, I don't think I'm going. I don't think I'm going to trade. Well, good luck going to Mount Fuji and catching Dragonair. Or oh, I will. I, I'm so excited for this. this. Is coming out this year. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh so my god. It's going to be great. It's going to be really oh, awesome. my beta god. Beta testing starts in Japan quite soon, okay. and then it's meant to roll out, and it's free to play. Yeah. So. It, Almost certainly, you'll be paying for Pokeballs. That will be the way they monetize. Oh, it. I did yeah. see, yeah. Well, on the interface uh, of the preview that I saw, there was something that was like crystals, and I was like, "Ah, oh, crap! Yeah. Oh my god, I have to like pay for crystals, whatever the hell that means." But then, like, which would be annoying. But you but know, it's, it's going to be one of those things, things where it's like it refreshes in twenty four hours or something. You know, Actually, well, that's it, a good point, like a lot yeah. of those, a lot of those apps you can play without spending money. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but then at the, the same process. time, like it's going to be like in Pokemon where you're not going to go all the way to Mount Fuji yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> then go me. right. I'm just using the you know the jabroni ball. Yeah, to get like, <laughs> like you wanna... faced with Zapdos and you're like, oh, I've got to pay thirty quid for a Master Ball. <laughs> I am already about Fuji, and I did pay quite a lot to get. I'm gonna pay an extra thirty quid. I'm going home. See ya. <laughs> I'll take my uh, chance with the jabroni ball. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm gonna. I think this might be game of the year. I'm really genuinely. To, to be honest, look, like to be devil's advocate, the footage makes it look quite shit. Shut up. The, uh, <laughs> the actual yeah, system like, looks it, terrible. I know it's early days, and that was just like a behind closed mm. doors presentation. But yeah, the motion tracking on the Ivasaur was a little bit like. 
chunky mm. and it wasn't like going quite well. I yeah. think that's only going to improve. And especially yeah. because it's an app now, like yeah. that process is incredibly easy to just like install yeah. updates and make that really yeah. fluid, really I mean, smooth. It's clearly being designed for every phone it can be designed right, okay. for. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. going to have to be not Ooh, yeah. the, the other best. exciting thing, which we didn't get a glance at, is the... Um, additional little piece that you can get uh, with. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I will not be okay. Of which I'll wear yours. Well, apparently, okay, yeah. So apparently, I'll be like, yeah, you got a Pokeball. You got a Pokemon. Yeah. Apparently, it just like on. vibrates on your wrist when you go past a Pokemon, which is yeah. really weird. So it's like just little invisible creatures Amazing. scurrying around I really your ankles. hope, because I've got a Microsoft Band. I really hope, because you can add like tiles to it. It's, like, not, it's not coming out on Windows Phone. Isn't it? No, and Shut Android up. and iOS. Mother... Bit, bin it now. That's the end. What's get the rid point? of it then. So the I was going to say, you can get little tiles, and I've got a couple of sports tiles you can go on and you can get like sports updates. It'd be amazing if you'd be like, Charizard. Yeah. What is it, what like is it little, that your Twitter, Twitter tile tells you on that thing? <laughs> yeah, the Twitter tile, which I can't work out why. I can't log into my Twitter. But the Twitter tile, every time you click, it says, Gary Lineker is popular on Twitter. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's meant to show my tweets, but it doesn't. But there's something about this game, po the Pokemon Go, like because I've been a massive fan of that like, geocache, and we've talked about this in the podcast before, oh, yeah. like for years. And there's something about this that sort of feeds into that. Just, but even like, like I was, I really liked Foursquare, like the idea mm. of not like specifically sharing it with everyone and like checking in, but I like the idea of like you know going to different places, checking in there, but you know getting like points for checking in and things like that. Like there's something I think it's about that gamification that I'm just like this is really, you, that really you, hits me, yeah. Do you remember how Watch Dogs tried that and it didn't work because no one cared about doing that in a virtual no. town? Exactly, like, yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. No. I feel like if this is done well, you could build yeah. a really great community out of this Absolutely, game. Absolutely, you know? yeah. Like going on the forums and hearing how people got this, yeah. and like tips. And then also, like, I think people just enjoy games that, like, actually encourage you to, like, do something practical yeah. and physical. Yeah. Do like, something like, outside, yeah. Imagine if I'm, like... Uh, you, me, and Dan get it, or like, yeah. like us three get it. I'm like, mm. hey, this weekend, like, there's Pokemon gonna be appearing in like this place. Like, we should go. Like, us all heading into the tube to get Zubats. Yeah, <laughs> with our caps amazing. on and like our badges and the it's, it's, of our it's a really big social thing. Like, you meet on a Sunday morning, you're like gonna go around. We should definitely go totally. geocaching and be do something with that. Track. That would be fun. Like, yeah, we've talked really about them for ages. We should definitely yeah. do that. Okay, let's do that. That's okay. my Wii. That is really good Wii news. Possibly the best Wii U news you've ever brought to this podcast. Well done. Joe, you've got some more Wii news before we go on to the best part of the podcast. Oh, yeah. just I really just a small thing. I really liked hearing about Telltale's Batman series, which I wasn't totally interested in. I just thought, that'd be all right. But them talking about it, it sounds like it's half playing as Bruce Wayne, half playing as Batman. Yeah. And the stuff you do as Bruce Wayne helps like inform the stuff you do at night and the stuff you do at night helps inform what you do as Bruce Wayne on the next day yeah Ooh. which sounds really interesting we I've never played a superhero game where I'm asked to just be the guy yeah like it's we were talking about how Matt Murdock's an interesting character yeah as a normal man definitely and yeah. Bruce Wayne almost never is I'd love no. to see him you know having to I don't know. I don't know what he does. Be a billionaire playboy. It'd be Man, great. Man, a Daredevil game would be amazing. I was just thinking telltale, that. Like in the courtrooms yeah. and everything, having to do the well, telltale. Like yeah. There is the Marvel... There is a Marvel Telltale game coming. Yeah. Yeah. They just haven't announced what it is. I want it to be Hawkeye. I would love a Hawkeye really? Telltale game. Oh, have you read the new Hawkeye run, the Matt Fraction? No, not at it's all. It's incredible. Like, it's him on his... It's sort of him dealing with being like a crap Avenger right. and just on his off time. <laughs> um, like, so these like Russian mobsters take over his, like start squeezing people for money in his building. He's just walking around sad like, doo -doo -doo. Like, it genuinely is that. <laughs> and then he gets like a dog that's obsessed with pizza and he's just like, and he, like it's really yeah, weird. Like, it's such a great <laughs> run of comics because it's just like a superhero no one cares about yeah. dealing with no one caring about I him. I can imagine great. him like having to do kids' birthday parties and stuff. And yeah, like, just, Billy, I got you an Avenger. <gasps> oh, which one, which one? Hey kids. Like, like Hawkeye, oh, oh, he's like, just shooting boos. balloons out of the air. Yeah. I'll take Falcon over him. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm excited for that. I think it should be really good. Um, I like the, the fact that they can maybe use some like younger or like different iterations of like the big supervillains that we've seen and things mm. like that. Like maybe in a way more smart way than Gotham is at the moment. Although oh. the last time I slide off Gotham, loads of people had to go me. Really? It, apparently, it's good now. Gotham. Like, I can't go back to that. Not no. after what it did to me the first no. time. I only watched two episodes of it. That peng <laughs> that penguin. Yeah. Oh my god. Awful. But yeah. No, I'm excited for that Telltale game as well. I think it's gonna be really good. But now it's time for everyone's favorite part. Ready for it? Of the show. Okay. Oh, I that's thought, the theme. I thought it's you were the gonna theme. do. I still haven't I thought you were gonna do yet. the who. 
The Who. I like someone that one last tweeted time. me saying that they got it. They massively got. Sorry, this section is called Keyword <laughs> Countdown. <laughs> I should say that. the IMDb game that all the kids are talking about. We've actually got some feedback later on. Actually, you might as well read yours now. Oh, okay. This one. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 that one, no. one. Yeah, it's you. Oh. You might as well read that one now. I've got that, one about that, it too. That's for later on. You well, might as well read that okay. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is from Daniel Taylor, I think so. Yeah, yeah it is Daniel Taylor. Hi, Daniel. Uh, Daniel says, I'm not sure if it's obvious, but surely the theme for Keyword Countdown has to be the final countdown by Europe. <gasps> it has just enough. Oh, jeez, to hype everyone up. Oh, and fit. also, uh, I hear that Europe are massive fans <clears throat> of the podcast. What? Yeah, yeah. Amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. Do you know that theme tune? Do you know that tune, Rory? Yeah, of course. Okay, well, he's written some lyrics there. He's you, written the lyrics. You're the band's guy. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Ready? Yeah. Someone do, someone do the... It's the keyword countdown. <laughs> 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 Oh. Are you ready? <laughs> We're playing together. Nice. Oh. To see who knows most. <laughs> He's crying. About film and TV. <laughs> the winner can boast. I guess we don't know who will win. Or who will lose. Who will lose. Until we play the game again. Dun, 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 dun. Let's play keyword countdown. <laughs> That, this is also his third piece of feedback, so does that make him a friend of the podcast? That makes him my best friend, not even just in podcasts. He's sorry for <laughs> you, song. you write a theme yeah, yeah. tune for a, a shitty little game that I play every week, and you will be my best friend forever, sir. You just spontaneously grew eyeliner during that. It's amazing. <laughs> well, Rory's in, a, Rory's in a band. I am. Um, but... And that's our new single. More, <laughs> more importantly, keyword countdown. The IMDb quiz came. So basically, if you've never heard of this before, keep on. Maybe you haven't. I don't know. I've listened but to it. IMDb has got some crazy keywords for films. They're really vague, really obscure. So I challenge you guys, okay, to guess the film by the keyword, and you get the points. Do you want to know what the scores in the league are at the moment? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely not. Well, I'll tell you because Rory, you could go top today. But we don't. We've already clarified that the point system makes no sense. I am only top because for some You're reason not I have played a stupid amount of time. Well, we don't need to. We don't even talk about where I actually. And to be am. fair, you could technically I was say, go could top. Could I go top today? If you guessed every single one of them on the first go, <laughs> you right. could go top. So Chris is currently top with thirty-eight points. Krupa behind him at twenty-nine. Rory on twenty-seven. Dale on twenty-two. Alex on seven. Krupa's is this, destroyed is this just a bun time. fight? Do we go at the same time? You can shout out as right. many times as you want. Sweet. Um, I'm but ready. if you miss, you might miss a clue if you're shouting out. That's so true. Don't be a dick. Is what <laughs> I would suggest to you. Film number one. Keyword countdown. Yeah. Epic. Uh, Sex in bed. Troy. Army. Troy. Three hundred. Yeah. Oh, oh, I just said Troy twice. <laughs> and it's sex in bed. Nice. <laughs> it's not epic. Well. Depends it's how good the sex is. It's not on me. <laughs> this is the thing. It wasn't, it wasn't one clue. Epic sex. Yeah. Yeah. Epic sex. <laughs> People tweet at me like arguing with the keyword. Tweet IMDB. Yeah. Like I told you, the keywords are mental. This is why we play this game. So nice one. You guessed it on army, so that's eight points to you. The other clues. <sighs> Am I honor, first now? In honor. The league? Not yet, no. Oh. Honor. Speared to death. Killing a messenger. Male rear nudity. Mm. Re rear entry sex. Reign of arrows. Persian Immortals. There's rear entry sex? Yeah. There's there that, is, yeah, because they've got that like Team America scene where it's them just in all different positions. Mm. Do they? Having a great time. I haven't seen that movie in ages. Yeah. <laughs> I'm well. going back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go then. Film number two. <laughs> Man with glasses. Leather, Superman. Leather jacket. Catholic Neo. hospital. Catholic hospital? Ant attack. <laughs> Rocket sled. Nuclear explosion. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Yay! Oh my god. Yay! I didn't I had, you were going so fast, <laughs> I had it. Like, I didn't remember any elements of that film. Rocket, yeah. sled, and ant attack. Yeah, rocket, yeah. sled, and nuclear explosion. That's oh, um, when he gets into the fridge. The, yeah. Which is actually an amazing bit of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I'll have no one say anything. What, the refrigerator with the nuclear explosion? Yeah, yeah. brilliant scene. I didn't mind that Absolutely absolute brilliant scene. This is absolutely guys. ridiculous. No. He would have been obliterated. You don't. You can't get oh, through a so nuclear. So you're you're like, having a go at it because it's 
Uh, not realistic. Not realistic. Not realistic. There's melting Nazis Come the on, one Rory. everyone likes. That's, you, no one can prove that's not realistic. <laughs> Come on, Rory. You don't know that. But, Rory, with that, you've just taken the lead by two points at the top of the league. <gasps> yes. But you, yes. You should be more yes. excited about that. Is that the whole game? No. Oh, no. good. We've got... Can that, we... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'll just read out the other clues. So, nuclear explosion you guessed it on. Yep. We also have archaeology professor, Area 51, flying saucer, crystal skull. Flying saucer. <laughs> Here we go. Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Film number three. Vengeance, Blood Splatter, Neo Noir. You're going so oh, fast. Uh, Sin City, Watchmen, Polaroid, Watchmen, Body oh. in a Trunk, Seven, Saw, Saw the film. <laughs> <laughs> it's not word association. If it was, that would be shit. <laughs> Crossbow, Stabbed in the Head, Stabbed in the Head, Male Reanudity again. Van Helsing, what is this? Release from Prison, Blade, Release from. Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> what? No, unfortunately, it was the film Blue Ruin, Joe, which we'd literally what? just been talking about outside. I haven't seen Blue Ruin. And also, you said I those don't remember books. Saw. I do remember Stabbed in the Head. Yeah. I think it's the first time we've ever had a movie go under the radar. Nah, we've had two. Oh. We, uh, the first week. If the last Sorry, one had been I've ever missed Beard, movie. but not for long, I would have got it. Yeah, that's, unfortunately, that was all there is. But there we go. God damn it. Okay, here we go. Joe. Yep. I can't believe I've not got a point. We've never had someone play <laughs> no and not get a point. And not get any points. And the thing is, I've been listening to the last few and I've been like, I got this. I'm ah. so good at this. <laughs> this is training. Here we go. Film number four. All right. Stealing. <laughs> Dis disguise. Vomiting. Dutch angle. Race against time. 1990s. Back to the future. <laughs> <laughs> Stabbed in the stomach. First part. Oh my god. Secret identity. Kickass? Mission. Kickass 2. <laughs> Mission Impossible? Yes, it's Mission Impossible. <laughs> god damn it! Well done, Rory. I got like dirt points. Dutch angle. One point. One point. 31 point. Four, 41 points you're in the league, top of the league with. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. yeah, more excited yes. for that one. That's I'm good. excited, yeah. That's Can't good. believe I'm going to get no points. You might get this one, you don't know. Oh, I'm not going <clears> to. <throat> lost all confidence. <clears throat> Here we go. Suck it, Croops. Right. Because I'm top of the league now. But he's not your... He, Tilly was top of the league. Yeah, but... Croops is not your rival. Croops was the one... La, the last time I was on, he was like, oh, I'm so bad at keyword countdown. And then he obliterated oh, he me. You, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Plus, I just hate him. <laughs> I just hate him. Right, I'm moving this on before you get back. <laughs> oh, my God. God. And don't get me started on Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Tilly, Christ. Wait till you hear this. <laughs> Gab's a shit. Right? What's happened, whole, what's whole, happened whole to you today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, film number five. Regret. Planning. Super strength. Technology. Ant-Man. Yes! Yes! Oh. I'm so happy you got that, Jack. <laughs> I really didn't want it to be a whitewash. No, that would have been horrible. Seven points you've got. So actually, you go, oh, you're tied with Alex. I'll take that. Ooh. At the bottom. Absolutely. But that's fine. There's no bottom in Keyword Countdown because everyone's a winner. There would have been if I hadn't got one. But there definitely would have been if you hadn't got one. And yeah. I'm the super winner. Yeah, so we got the technology. Van, man-punching woman. Woman-punching man. <laughs> Bald man. <laughs> This gets harder. <laughs> Killing an animal. Anthony. Killing an animal? An Anthony. Oh, of course. R.I.P. Anthony's a good last uh, R.I.P. <laughs> Falcon the character. Killing an animal? Yeah, Anthony. He kills Anthony. That is an insect, not an animal. <laughs> Eight legs, a spider Eight legs, is an arachnid. <laughs> um, well, it's on IMDb, so you can, you, can talk about, you can talk to them about that. I'm sure insects are animals. No. It's not for us to decide, and it's certainly not for us to decide today. <laughs> what a fantastic edition of Keyword Countdown. That was a good oh, one. I'm, uh, I'm genuinely a bit shaky, that's but I good. wasn't going to yeah. get that. Like, Kruber says he hates uh, this because he doesn't like feeling, like, on edge or mm. in, well, you've in, never in competition mode. It's not a good experience. Isn't it? It's stressful. Well, it's, it's, like, it's like, intense. It's You're like, rattling off clues. I mean, like, oh, I'm, like, shrinking in my chair. It's like the start of Thunderbirds. <laughs> like, man punching <laughs> Uh, uh, butt sex. Uh, you, like, you're believe, screaming words at me. It's can't horrible. believe you got rear male nudity in there twice. Uh, it's good, it's I try and get in. If, if rear male nudity is in it, I put it in the um, keywords. So my goal is to have a week where every single film has got rear male nudity. Thelma and Louise. Yeah, there you go. I might do that next get week. Get that. But I probably won't. Okay, first. on to the bath section. Rory, the what section? Yeah. 
Do you want to kick off the barf section? Barf. Oh, barf, guys. What's your barf news? Well, it kind of ties in to something that we touched on on Keyword Countdown. That's why. Which is Indiana Jones 5 has got a writer. Okay. Um, and it is uh, what well, David Kep? David, who, yeah. Who uh, co-wrote Crystal Skull. I originally put this in bad. There are kind of pros and cons about this. Okay. But the immediate con is that Crystal Skull was trash. Yeah, and somewhat. And I'm quite scared that... If it's not a change in writing, I don't know what's going to be different. Immediate pro. The dude wrote Jurassic Park, bro. Yeah, well, of course, that's the immediate pro. Yeah. But then, what? You can't... He wrote Jurassic Park when they wrote Crystal Skull, still, and that didn't really help anything. Yeah, but he also wrote Carlito's Way, another favorite film of mine. But it's he, one of these things... He wrote Mission Impossible, and he also wrote Death Becomes Her. I, <laughs> oh, I like Death Becomes it's Her. <laughs> I, well, I'm hoping... You can't beat Goldie Horn. <laughs> I'm hoping that oh. it's the same writing team up, because after 4, they have realized what people don't want... And now they feel comfortable having the same team tackle it again. That's that's me looking yeah. at it from an optimistic point of view. Yeah. I mean, um, the bad side is that it could just be awful again. The writing's not going to be the problem, though, is no. it? It's well, going to no, be it depends. a really old man being forced to do energetic things. I don't necessarily see that as because I thought he was. He might quite not be doing energetic for, things. Yeah, he might not be. Could be. Maybe he'll be, be the one. Way around an old folks home, Do you know what? You know what I'd love is what? if it's Shia LaBeouf teaching uh, an archaeology class, and it pans over, and it's Harrison Ford, and he has "Love You" written on the back of his eyelids. <laughs> That'd be brilliant. Or I, just "Hello, Son." Yeah. <laughs> Quite good. And Shia LaBeouf blinks, and he's got "Not Famous" anymore <laughs> written on his eyelids. Yeah. Yeah. Like to be honest, I'm kind of excited for it because I love Indiana Jones, mm. and I figure. Can't it can't be any worse, can it? No. Well, That's true. Yeah. It can't be. They but, but like don't live said, in a vacuum. They know that people, everyone hated. Yeah. There, the were, there the are the bits Crystal of Crystal Skull that I kind of liked, though. The fridge. The, the fridge, fridge is all right. The fridge is fantastic. There was, there was a whole middle section of Crystal Skull that I actually really liked, where it seemed like it was getting, it really felt familiar, really mm. felt like an Indiana Jones movie, and then just. The, the further it got towards the aliens bit. and the skulls yeah. and the weird, just the weirdness, and it just got further and further away from where it should have been going. Uh, and I know, like, part of that was because they wanted, like, Shia LaBeouf to, like, you know, adopt the mantle, mm. and then the whole idea was that he was going to continue the franchise. Yeah. Thank Christ that didn't actually happen. I um, quite like I really, Shia LaBeouf. I find it hard I to love dislike him, yeah. him. I think, I, I I think always he just does back, such odd things yeah. that I love. I flash back to Even Stevens. I watched that well, that's, when I was that's, yeah. a bit too that's old to watch it all from. the time. Mm. Like, the I Even think Stevens movie, I used to just watch that on repeat. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was freaking hilarious. Have you, have you seen, um, you know, Shia LaBeouf did the thing where he live-streamed his own face watching his own films? Yes. Have you seen him Reacting to the Even Stevens film, yeah, because it's one it. of the really he loves ones. It. Oh, yeah. It's yes. amazing. Awesome. It's so great. He's pissing That's himself. Good. It's great. The thing is that I really like him. I, I sometimes like him in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I've actually only ever seen that film once, and in yeah, the cinema, I've seen it a couple but, times. Uh, the thing that in my head I really like. I remember is that he is basically acting you know in that episode of The Simpsons where uh, Martin Sheen comes back and it turns out that Martin Sheen is actually Seymour Skinner no. and oh yeah, yeah yeah and the Seymour Skinner that we know is actually has stolen uh, oh, I the do guy's identity it's, it's basically the plot of Mad Men <laughs> it's <was> such, <laughs> um, such a weird Simpsons episode but it is a really good episode though mm. it's a brilliant episode but basically when they show Seymour Skinner when he's young he's like a no good Nick like punk and like I love this and he basically is Shia oh, LaBeouf like King Comb, the, yeah, yeah like, like, there's a bit where he's like, uh, he's like, don't you have any plans? He's like, all my plans involve combing my hair. <laughs> and there's a bit where he's combing his hair and someone shoots the comb up. He's like, he gets a flick now and goes, all right, who wants a piece of me? <laughs> and that's exactly what Shia LaBeouf is like in Kingdom of Crystal Skull. So I kind of find it hard to dislike him. I, I, there, there were parts that I really enjoy in Crystal Skull. I remember one scene uh, specifically, what time era is that? What, 19? About 4, about 4 p.m.? 4.30. Oh, <laughs> terrible, terrible. Well, what's around that, like, the like the, um, the time period of, like, the Greece, like, that type of uh, yeah. era. There's a great scene where, like, um, where Shia LaBeouf gets, like, punched back into, yeah. like, a whole group of, like, leather jacket wearing guys. Yeah. And he knocks, like, someone back with all the varsity jackets. And you've got, like, those two conflicting groups in, like, this, like, soda store. It's, yeah. like, this really, like, old American. The greasers and the jocks. Or would you be a jock? I'm a greaser. You so are a greaser. Yeah. You're dead. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's got a knife under the table, guys. He's been Joe's the nerd. Away. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Just, I'm just Crispy Glover. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's way too early to say yet, but Spielberg's on board. It could be good. As I said, it's not going to be worse, is it? You Other bit of barf news, Joe. 
Uh, yeah, no, this is just a small one because there was a bit of weird, interesting games design history. So, do you know Ark Survival Evolved, this I'm, dinosaur survival game? Yes. I've never played it, but Rory and I talk about it weekly that okay. we should play it. So, there is a button in that where that lets you poop on command. <laughs> um, and everyone's kind of latched onto this. It's like, oh, how funny. And, yeah. like, poop is a useful resource. You can fertilize things with it and stuff ah. like that. But the designer revealed this week that the reason it's in there is as a suicide weapon. Um, so, they needed to... To in, eat your poop? Yeah. So in Ark, uh, you can be trapped by other players, like imprisoned, right. and there's no way out if you don't have the right tools. Yeah. Um, and they needed to find a way for players to quickly respawn, but they didn't want just a suicide button. Oh, God. So they put in the poop button so that you could poop, eat the poop, take 70 points of damage, repeat as necessary until you die. It's Why just don't they just have, like, a punch-your-own-face I don't like, know. Option. I like, don't understand. Because that's mental. You'd have a T-Rex punching his oh, own face. Oh, but eating your own shit until you die <laughs> is <laughs> totally normal. But at least that's something that, that animal could potentially do, rather than punching itself in the face. Also, how weird would that be? If a T-Rex well, is, also, a T-Rex can't reach his face. Oh, yeah, you're, you're, not, to, like, you're not playing an animal. Okay. You play a person. What? So, yeah. You oh. can ride the animals around. But you, I thought you. I thought the point nah. was you play the animals. No. Nah. Well, this game just got <laughs> off my two playlists. But Sounds anyway. like I don't want to eat my own crap on my human. Wait, hang on. So the humans are eating their own shit. Yes, that's oh. why, to kill that's themselves. That's why I'm saying how weird this is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's. Yeah, I just thought that's an interesting bit of game what, design. What's history. the animation for eating your poop? Is it there isn't you, one? Oh, you just okay, pick right. it up and then use it in your inventory. Right. And then you just go, just fall over. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm good because I don't want them actually putting the poo in their mouth. <laughs> just really laboriously, like slow, just yeah. shoveling I feel it like, in. Just crying. Like, <laughs> I feel like decades of progress in game design have evolved almost every game so that you have never needed to include a suicide button, like in your mechanic. That should I be. I wonder, but like, it, but it is it is part of the design that players can trap you and stuff. Like, there's a really horrible story where there was a guy griefing on a server. Mm. Server. So they trapped him in like a little box, like a cage with just a hole in it. And people would take turns on this server, tranquilizing him so he couldn't poop and eat his own poop <laughs> and feeding him blood to keep him alive. Like, it was really <laughs> weird. Sick. Like, I know, right? <laughs> and they had this whole like ethics, uh, like argument happened yeah. where it was like is it fair to keep a real life player unable to play the game he's paid for <laughs> because he was griefing and it became like an actual prison thing where it's like is it fair that we're torturing this virtual player by feeding him blood <laughs> <laughs> this is like this is what I assume like is like the Hunger Games people yeah. started these servers yeah. and then like they leave the buildings like wait do you not need to watch this up? it's gone mad in there yeah. it's gone mad in there like <laughs> we don't know how this happened every, but like just let them do their own thing like, every, just like bolt the door <laughs> close and leave them but in like, this they, for that they would have had to be on shifts surely yeah so, they like, were be like, a <laughs> whole server of people were taking turns to do this to keep this guy because he was ruining the game for everyone you're actually be like what are you up to today Rory Oh, I'll just be playing video games. What are you playing at the moment? <laughs> oh, it's just a new game. Uh, what is it called? Uh, Ark Survival of Old. Ark Survival of Old. You can tame dinosaurs and stuff, but actually what I do is tranquilize this dude <laughs> and feed him blood. Feed him blood. <laughs> but so. actually what I do is... No, no, no. I, uh, uh, yeah, I tame dinosaurs. I, I ride dinosaurs. <laughs> no, nothing else? Because you sound like you're going to say something else about blood. You almost said blood. <laughs> nothing to do with blood. I'm not telling you now. It's the same That's with weird. all of these games. Every time I play one, all yeah. I do is like punch trees mm. and like just die and fall over and not understand how cold gauges yeah. work. Everyone else is having these amazing experiences where they're like invoking real life ethics. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do that. Yeah, I'm going to. I don't know if I want. This makes me want to play the game more or less. No, yeah. less. If <laughs> yes. are you just scared of being trapped and fed blood now? Yeah, Can terrified. You focus? You're definitely getting fed blood. <laughs> Let's feed him blood. Let's all play it. Yeah. So if you guys at home want to like play as well, then uh, let us know. We'll all install him. We'll have a big sort of big party where we feed Rory blood. Yeah. You up for that? We'll call no, it Plasma no, Town. No. No. <laughs> no. no. Okay. Really important question then. Mm. Yeah. How much would you pay Gary Busey to leave you a message? shoebox faced maniac Gary Busey. Yes. I um, love Gary Busey. So this was this is my my question that would determine how much I would pay. Okay. Is it just him doing it or can I request one of his many characters well, to leave me a message? Very interesting question. So I found this website called Celeb VM. Have you heard about this? <laughs> Um, I've put it underneath the head in celebrity shite site. Um, but basically, it's a celebrity site where you can leave, you can pay money 
to get a personalized message from a celebrity back. Real celebrity. Real life celebrities. You're making so me this really is just sad. so this Absolutely. is just a way of finding out whose careers have gone to the rocks. Yeah. Absolutely. Like when Dave Benson Phillips used to let people Skype him for money. Dave Benson Phillips is one of the people here. Oh, of course he right. bloody he's, is. He's on there. Like, him and his moving company. Absolutely. So <laughs> but yeah, so basically this the celeb VM founder Angus Lang- Lancaster says came up with the idea after working with One Direction on their music video Live While We're Young. We know it's the pushy fans live but while we're live young, while we're young I think you'll find sorry Jesus. could you sing it I don't remember it uh, no I don't remember <laughs> we noticed the pushy fans were able to get autographs and pictures while the shyer fans did not want to bother the band and therefore missed out we decided that we wanted to create a simple fun fair and equal way for fans and celebrities to connect oh, while also having the ability to this help charities celebrities are really enjoying recording videos of fans and put a lot of effort in, put a lot more effort in than we might have thought now I've looked through it, right? This, all, lies. this is crap. This guy saw Katie Price weeping in a wimpy yeah. and went, "I've got an idea." <laughs> but do you know, do you know what? I, I'll ask you a question. What walk of life or what vocation do you think? The, like, what kind of celebrity do you think there's the most of on this website? Game show presenter. Mm, close. Reality TV. Personality. That's not far off. I'll tell you the one that's got the most on there: wrestlers. Oh. Brutus Beefcake. Do you remember Brutus the Barber Beefcake? No, I don't. Uh, Seventy-five dollars. Uh, curry Man. I'm not sure who he is. No. Twenty-five dollars for, cur- for Curry Man. No, he's not sharp. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a load of there's a load of wrestlers on there. Like Match Man, Maddie Savage. No, he's he's dead. So he's not. Yeah, there. Well, <laughs> it's just a really we're just a, a voice really mail echo, from the- an echoey voice. <laughs> so, but basically, think that kind of level. That's what that's what we're uh, on the level Bloody of. Hell. But yeah, uh, we'll get to Gary Busey in a minute. But this is this is a thing that people are doing, and they they're all really poorly recorded. A lot of them are like recorded on people's phones, but oh, they're done geez. sort of portrait instead and of landscape. And so they're personalized. They're personalized. Yeah. So right. you you literally you pay Brutus Bar BK seventy five dollars, mate, and you'd be like, hey Joe. It's me, Brewers Beefcake. What's up? Weird. That's it. I can't even watch Celebrity Big Brother because that makes me too sad. Yeah. This, I think, will just really make me sad. This will make you even... We were watching that recently. It was good. Yeah, this will make you even sadder. (laughs) Yeah, bracky. Um, Martin Stevens is one of the kids from the Village of the Damned. Guess how much he's going for? Well, $9. $20. Um, Barry and Darren from Storage Wars, UK. Storage Wars, UK. 15 quid. Derek Akora, the man who can speak to ghosts. No, Derek Akora's Akora on here. not sunk that low. Yeah, he has. 25 quid for Akora. Do you want to message from Akora? Are you kidding Absolutely. me? Absolutely. I might actually do that. The people who are in the suits uh, for, the, for Michelangelo and Donatello in the Turtles movies. Oh, no. $20. Greedo from Star Wars. 20, 35 quid. Warwick Davis, 25 quid. Greedo Warwick costs Davis. more than Warwick Davis. He's better than this. Apparently not. <laughs> Uh, Neil Razor Ruddock, 30 quid. Yeah. What, more than Warwick Davis, Neil Razor yeah. Ruddock. Big Keith off the office, he's going for 20 quid. Oh, this really hurts. This is making me really sad. One of the saddest ones, and I've got a little story to go with this one as well. The cowboy kid from Willy Wonka. I don't remember. Who which, wait, would which want one? a voicemail from the very him? First, the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, the Gene Wilder film. Right. The kid who played the cowboy kid, uh, he's twenty five dollars. Bloody. I actually saw like him TV. once. I saw him. Is that what his name? Is? I don't know. Is that is, is like he the one who's obsessed with TV, or is that someone else? It might be. I'm not sure. Anyway, I like it doesn't to think that he's much. just mm. now like a forty year old man, but still having a cowboy hat. Like, Mate, I saw him in New York Comic Con, oh, and no, he was Gav. sitting there, and basically, rest, it's funny we said wrestlers because in Comic Cons, in big American ones. Not only do you have like famous like sci-fi people and not so famous sci-fi people and like comics and things like that, but you also have like um, Playboy Playmates, wrestlers, like old wrestlers, mm. where they're like giving out autographs and things like that. And this guy was basically in this one part of New York Comic Con, mm. surrounded by Playboy Playmates, like who were like 40, 50 years old and still in like skimpy outfits, which is fine, but they didn't look very nice and old wrestlers and it's just this guy the cowboy kid from Willy Wonka just sitting there waiting for you to come up to him and like while I was filming not even a Gustav's gloop no. like <laughs> while, while I was filming he was like he was like oh hey how you doing I was like oh, oh, oh. he just walked away because I was like I can't talk to this guy but so wait, did you recognise him as the cowboy kid absolutely not but he had, gonna say. No, but he had like a big picture of himself oh. like on the edge of his uh, on the edge of his table he's just got that in his garage under yeah. a tarp just pulls it's it out really, to go it's, to Comic-Con. It's really sad. But I mean, if you want him to give you a message, you can, $25. And I actually think, like, I kind of... There are a few. I'd, what do I spend my money on? Utter shit. I was going to say, I could just make my own lunch at home and bring yeah. it in instead of going out for lunch. And then get Derek Akora to cause you a message at the exactly, end of the week. Exactly, 25 quid. Yeah. 
Oh, should we get Derek Akora to record us a message? Do an intro to the podcast. Yeah, let's do that. We'll do that. Oh, okay. holy shit. So, yeah. the most expensive one that I could find was Dennis Rodman. How much do you think Dennis Rodman charges? Thousand dollars. No, but this is still a very like small thing. Five hundred. Five hundred dollars. That's how nice. much he charges. But he goes as to we North said, Korea for visits. Yeah, really? as we said at the beginning yeah. of this video, Jesus. how much would you pay, or how much you think Gary Busey charges for a personalized phone message? If he would do it, and it's less than Dennis Rodman. If you do it in character, <laughs> it better be. I would pay. Mm, I would pay. Maybe. Fifty pounds. What's that, what's that in dollars? Say dollars. Or dollars. Okay. What? Eighty dollars. Eighty dollars. What are you saying? He charges. Yeah. Two hundred dollars for a personalized message from Gary Busey. Uh, uh, to be honest, after that list, that makes yeah. me feel quite good because I like. He's still got something. Two hundred dollars feels like sumptuous. A lot of these, a lot of these celebrities apparently do give it to charity as well. Really? Yeah. Well, that's quite nice. Yeah, that is quite nice. But I mean, they it's haven't. Still really sad. On a lot of the pages, mm. doesn't like actually say hey i'm warwick davis and i give this money to charity so right. ma maybe they do i don't know but i just want to say my birthday's in june so if you guys want to start not, not you guys at home i'm talking about these chumps here like if you guys want to start What's that happening? having a whip round in the office for Busey, for gary Busey to give me a little message you're getting the cowboy kiss i will <laughs> <laughs> you're getting a weeping hey, message Gav. from the cowboy kid <laughs> damn you oh, cowboy we're, we're kid gonna, we're gonna get the cowboy kid to say hey gav i actually do remember you from comic-con oh, and i was just shy because oh, i really like oh, you oh. hope you have an everlasting birthday <laughs> Right, let's have some I think I should do my own feedback. voicemail service. You get like personalized message from, from Roy you. Powers. Yeah. No. Being like, hey bro. Whoa, all the colors <laughs> of the rainbow or something. I don't know, whatever. I don't know what my cat is. <laughs> I'll do Let's have some like feedback. Come on. That's what, your catchphrase. You, you, um, oh, you did have the first. Joe, now you've got the first yeah. bit of okay. feedback. Okay. There we go. And also, I should shh, point shh. out, Tilly printed these out, not me. So even though they, if they say any nice things about me, Till you printed them out. Uh, okay, so this is Kevin from Manchester. Yeah. He says, great shows as usual. Thank you. Thanks, Kev. Just you right. thank you, thank you very that. much. <laughs> I'm in now. I'm in for the long haul. <laughs> Just writing to say I'm loving the IMDB game. And it's oh, great. And it's oh, great to Tilly. <laughs> bullshit. Tilly printed this on. He really did. He really did. <laughs> and it's great to play along to it in my head during the commute. That sounds quite sinister. Yeah. Mm, keywords. Just making them up. <laughs> distracts me... Distra this gets creepier. Distracts me from the emotionless robot-style world the tram at 7am becomes dot, dot, dot. Okay. I've been there. We've mm. all been there, man. It's a mm. dark place. It's robot it trams. I, the only thing is with it, I need Crushed to... Crushed in a tram, people feeding you blood, <laughs> tranquilizing you is horrible. I mean, Manchester Life is, is weird. A cool play, yeah. I need to work out a way of being able to do it so people can still play along even if... Do you know what I mean? Like, because as soon as one of you look, guys shouts out, that's it. That's the end. We need a button. Need... Wait, no, it doesn't work. Because then work. it's just a buzzer. In an audio form. Mm, Can't do it. It's hard, isn't it? Don't know how to do it. Unless I do one big recording at one point of a load of them. So if, if you want to play the, play along on the way somewhere. But we'll do that when you've recorded the, oh, when you've recorded so like the theme tune. Like the big book. Gav's big book, book of keywords. Of keyword countdown, <laughs> yeah. That's not a bad idea, actually. That isn't a bad idea. That is more work for Dale. <laughs> we could get <laughs> rich. The Why? He's got to edit it all, edit it all together. No, I've got them all. I've just got to re-record re it. We'll do it at Christmas. We'll do it at Christmas. Like a Christmas special. Boom, done. There we go. Keyword quiz. Okay, uh, I'm next, sorry. Uh, it's from Will Allen. So just to say, 10 Cloverfield Lane should be an early Oscar shout. No. <laughs> a far cry from the first film. I'm glad for it. I'm glad for it we should all be. For a film with such limited build-up to be so good in every department is an amazing and pleasant surprise. John Goodman shows why he is the legend he is in this film. Now, we've both seen it. You haven't. I'm dying to, dying to. Um, I asked both of you for your professional opinion on whether I should go see it or not. And it was very What's your unprofessional opinion on? Oh, no, no. See, everyone keeps saying that I hate it. It's just because I like it less than other people. Yeah. But, like, it's well worth seeing. Like, I it's love a that. really interesting film. And, like, I'm surprised stuff like that is getting made yeah, for the mainstream. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's, it's really worthwhile. Um, I just felt like. Well, I can't talk about why. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. It's, spo it's spoiler really filled hard. my reasons. Because like for before, a like the reviews started coming out and stuff, the general vibe around it was that this was a bad movie that they had like thrown on the Cloverfield tag to try and drum up more like audience, like participation. I mean, yeah. But like that is absolutely true. 
But, but it's mean, not but a bad it seems film. Like it's, no, 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 it's yeah, not yeah, a bad yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. But the, the Cloverfield tag was thrown on it. To yeah. Drum yeah, that's what I assumed um, that much. But I assumed it was because the movie was like bad and they were trying yeah. to get more people to see it. <laughs> that's but, fair. Because that, that happens a lot with like video game movies. Like, video, yeah. like they just go, all right, we've got this shite oh, script yeah. that we're never going to make. Okay, I'm selling the rights to House of the Dead. All right, wicked. We'll whack those two things together. Now House of the Dead takes place on an island instead of taking place in a house. <laughs> I can't wait till we break away from that. It's but, um, so nice. Goodman is amazing in it. Goodman's right? brilliant like, in it. Like the other two Mary people, Elizabeth Winstead yeah, is great. She's fantastic in it. I really like the other guy. Right. Oh, I didn't know who he was. Like, Beard man. There, there's a lot of really cool stuff going on in that film. It's yep. absolutely brutal. It's really, it's so tense, I think. Yeah. Someone pointed out Oh, actually, it was uh, J.J. Abrams. I was listening to an interview with him. Oh, my mate J.J. Some, uh, just some said, joker uh, pointed out. Um, he pointed out that the the cuts are really long in that film. Yeah, they are. So it, you're just watching people's faces for so long. Yeah. And it really, love that yeah, kind of it's stuff. great. It's That's really good. clever. You'll really like it. I, I, I love the film. I think it's really good. I do want to watch it again now yeah. because I feel left out. <laughs> I want to <laughs> like it more. Rory, what have you got? Uh, this is from Kyle. Kyle says, Hey guys, so this week I caught my first glimpse of the multiplayer gameplay for Bethesda's new and upcoming iteration of Doom. All I'll say that is if you like the gameplay and aesthetic style of Unreal Tournament, Does mixed he with work more for Bethesda? <laughs> <laughs> um, Critics are calling it visceral. <laughs> Halo type <laughs> texture. And mix that with a heavy dose of LSD that it looks like you're in for a treat. He imagines that I, Mr. Powers, am looking forward to it. Um, I was a big uh, Doom fan, and also Quake as well. I used mm. to play a lot of those games growing up. I think this guy does work for Bethesda, and he's basically tricked us. It tricked you into reading it out. Well, mm. me, because, well, um, what's his name? Tilly printed it out. You keep but saying that Tilly. May, uh, I, think, may have been, like, I think he's going to use something you just said and like quote it on a trailer and say, oh, IGN. Rory Power says that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like Unreal Tournament, Rory Powell. Kyle, you're actually IGN. not allowed to get that quote unless you go onto my VM site, and that's actually going to be twenty bucks. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'll do it for you in a voicemail, mate. I can't believe I. Oh, I was about to say something really stupid then. So let's carry on. Because I was going to go. I can't believe you remembered the name of the website, but I realised what VM VM <laughs> stands for. <laughs> I was like, how do you remember the name of the website? Gav pulled Rory. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you said so. that. Uh, anyway, on to the question. On the back of this game and how crazy it looks, I'd quite like to know what the most bizarre game and bizarre film you guys have ever seen. Crazier and weirder, the better. Most bizarre game is um, El Shaddai Ascension of the Metatron. Have you ever seen that? <laughs> no. It's made by the people who made, or some of the oh, people who made is, the original. Play, yeah. They made the original Devil May Cry, so it's basically right. a Devil May Cry oh, game. Devil May Cry. But it's based on ancient uh, Jewish like myth. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's like an angel going through this weird world of demons that's sometimes the future and sometimes like just like weird abstract landscapes and stuff. It sounds like Devil May Cry Five. <laughs> well, yeah. It's, so it's and it's. It's just really, really weird, but also just an amazing action game at the same yeah. time. It's cool. great. It's so strange. It's well worth playing. I think it's about nine quid. I what? I'm trying to think of like the weirdest game, like you know the Clock Tower games. Oh yeah, like they're really weird. Like to I've the point really where I don't really know what's going on in them. I, I kind of play like, just like big guys chasing you out of rooms. Yeah, and, stuff. and I, I think maybe like PT as well. Like I know it was only a trailer, but like yeah. that's up there with one of the weirdest things. I had no idea what was going on. I had no idea what was meant to happen. I suppose yeah, it's bizarre in the sense that it doesn't tell you how to proceed, no. and it took people days to finish Absolutely, it yeah. for a two-hour game and stuff. Yeah. <sighs> That was such a... What, do you remember when that came out? And just yeah. everyone going, what, what is, is going this? On, yeah. Like, it genuinely changed the world overnight. Yeah, it's really brilliant. weird. Really, really good. Amazing. Um, I still haven't played PT yet. I'm saving you? it for like it's a... Let's, PlayStation. I'm saving it for a Let's Play. Yeah, like, I've got I want to have it in the bag and then maybe like... What's, what's, it'll scare the shit what's your weirdest game or film, Rory? The weirdest game... The weirdest game I ever played. So me and my friends, we went through like a period where we used to just go into... To, I think it was like CEX and just buy, you know, those like... 20p PS2 games that would just be like mm. in baskets, you know, we would just buy That's tons of these. That's how I got Clock Tower 3, yeah. Yeah, just like, because that was really fun. Like you could uh, spend maybe like 30 pounds on a new title or what we used to do was we just pick up maybe like 15 games for the same price and then we could all like just go around someone's house and just like play these really weird games. It yeah. was really fun. Uh, those were cool One days. of the weirdest ones I ever played was this game for PlayStation 2 called Trapped. Spelt T R A P T, I okay. think, like trapped, mm -hmm. and it was really bad, really badly translated into English. I think it was like a Japanese game. You're basically in this castle or house, 
and you have to go through and there's all these traps that you can like either place yeah, or get it. caught Yeah, that's it. It's like a in. strategy game where you're placing traps around. Yeah, yeah. I've seen footage of that. It's so, so weird. Mm. And because like you never really know what's going on in the narrative, you'll just like walk into a room and this cutscene will happen where it's like a demon and it just starts raining blood from the <laughs> skies and you're like, I have no idea what's happening. And also every time you moved uh, up or down on the menu, you'll yeah. make a whip noise. <laughs> so if you want to change the volume or the settings, you'd be like whoosh. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Getting it was louder. Crazy, horribly weird game. But we had so much fun playing it. Like I used to love doing that, just picking up like a basket of just like the worst games imaginable. That's a good great. idea. It was really fun. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I don't I know like if that's that. still a big viable option. You well, might now be able you to pick up some like good games for. I just do it on like itch.io now. I oh, just yeah. go onto the free game section and find yeah. really weird stuff. Sometimes I just spend an afternoon just combing through people's mad releases it's good so play trapped hunt it down play trapped we'll do this bit as the final bit then because we've gone on <gasps> gone on loads time flies we have uh, fun this is a this is again i didn't i didn't print these out uh Full sugar viking did. rob says i love gav can we have more gav keyword count oh, you've read this is one, the best yeah? <laughs> now he says i'm loving the dark souls prepare to try videos oh, amazing. uh so this is a series that uh rory Krupa and I have been doing uh, where we challenge uh, some dickhead noob that we know <laughs> called Rory, who's I never played Dark the Souls. <laughs> that you're a dickhead or a noob. Both. Um, to finish Dark Souls by the time Dark Souls 3 comes out. It's been a roller coaster ride of emotions. It's like we, we uh, talked about it a little bit at the end of the last week's podcast, but like it's only getting funnier. It's only getting funnier. Like, I thought you were going to say it's only getting harder because that's what you should be saying. Well, that's <laughs> equally, yeah. Because like, there's like, some episodes recently that are just. Well, this guy's just said, but I'm guessing Rory's going to tap out at the Ornstein and Smell fight. Should we do full disclosure? No, because do... I think that's on Sunday or Monday. That's on Sunday or Monday. Um, and I can say now that that is the thing that I've hated and also loved the most out of any video game I've ever played or witnessed being played. Because when when we finally defeat him, that's not we, we're going to finish it, so it's not a spoiler. But when we finally defeat them. Uh, there's nothing that we've recorded that's like it. Well, I saw it because I'm outside of all of this. So all yeah. I see is I just turn around and occasionally Rory's like either grimacing or laughing yeah. at something that's happened. And this oh. morning I saw a clip. I won't say what it is yeah. because it's from an upcoming one, but there is a look of horror on Krupa's face at something that happens that is yeah. so powerful. <laughs> Like, it's, it was horrible. It's There's incredible. Horrible I've never seen anyone look like that in a video game. And I do want to <laughs> He's not even playing it. I do want to be clear because like people have like posted in the comments thinking that we have beat the game mm. and we're now releasing all the videos. That is not true. We have not beaten the game yet. <laughs> Dark Souls 3 is very much coming and we yeah. have not be I think Dan says we're maybe about halfway through. Oh my yeah. God. Like this is the grind. Like you It's can, a big week this week. It's it's really and to see us like struggle through it on yeah. camera is really funny. So I would yeah, I'd recommend watching. Yeah, definitely it. check that out. And just finally then as well, Rory, what are you doing on Saturday? Oh, I'm playing a show. You are playing a show. Yeah. Rory, so Rory's band, Team RKT, Team Rocket, what do you like to be called? Either one. It's all I, good. I hate it's when all bands good. I know that's, spell I know that's what you hated. So that's why I'm like... Uh, but Rory's it. band is actually really good. They um, opened for us at our Podcast 300 celebrations. And you're playing a gig where... Uh, the loading bar. Which one? There's two of them. It's in Stratford. It's in the Stratford one. Yeah. The Stratford sure. One. Are you sure it's not in the Dalston one? Positive. Are you sure? It's a new one. It's the new one. It's big. It's okay. brand new. There's room for everyone. So Rory's playing a fun. show there on Saturday night. What time? If you want to hear me do a cover of the Keyword Countdown theme, <gasps> mm. we'll do it live. We'll do it live. We'll so do it live. If you, guys, you write it, and I'll do it live. If you guys should definitely come down to loading bar. What time are you on? Uh, I think it starts around eight. Okay. So and yeah, we're on about nine. Come down. I want to hear people shouting keyword countdown in between every song. Uh, we're all going to be there as well. So if you want to come down and hang out um, and throw things at Rory until he plays the keyword countdown theme, you're not very blood. welcome. Do not throw blood. <laughs> throw <laughs> feed him some blood. <laughs> throw him traps. Keep him alive. <laughs> people are just blow darting me between songs and I'm just <laughs> falling over. No, Puddling guys, let blood. me sing. <laughs> but that's this week's podcast. If you want to get in touch with you can. IGN underscore UK feedback at IGN.com. And we shall see you next week. Bye-bye. Sweet dreams. Thank <laughs> you.